After having to pick up the shards from February's leadership convention, the United Democratic Party, UDP, went for a second round to elect Dean Barrow's successor. A few weeks prior, the UDP had as many as five aspiring leaders. Fast forward to July 12, and there were three, namely Wilfred Elrington, John Saldiver, and Patrick Faber. Unlike February's showdown, Sunday's convention was a sober event that saw a handful of supporters showing up along with the voting delegates. The process this time around was streamlined, and the candidates were not allowed to campaign inside the IT vet. The usual placards and posters were visibly absent, with the exception of one Saldivar banner at the entrance. The only indication of a political event were the shirts, masks, and UDP flags. At the entrance, both Saldivar and Faber were seen for hours, welcoming delegates and trying to get in that final push with them. Saldivar declined multiple requests for an interview, but Faber was up front and center with the media. My campaign this time around has really been based on trying to rally the troops and getting our party folks, because remember these delegates are delegates on a convention day, but they really are the executive committees of our constituencies countrywide. And so my message to them has been, you know what I am all about already, I don't have to come and tell you all of that all over again. Have you felt a difference though in terms of how you're being received now compared to how you were last campaign? Well to be honest with you there were some instances last time where I was not welcomed into a, a meetings uh, the, when I asked for meetings with certain constituencies uh, that was not allowed and this is not something that is new that has been the practice over the times that we have had these conventions but to be honest I don't think that there were any uh, if I didn't visit a constituency, it was by choice this time. Um, I, I, I did uh, manage to do some group meetings in districts, some multiple constituencies. So um, the reception was very good and I'm very pleased at how uh, we were given access this time around to delegates. The outgoing party leader, Prime Minister Dean Barrow, showed up at around 10 o'clock in the morning to cast his vote. On his way out, he spoke with the media briefly. Regarding the day's event, Barrow indicated that he was thinking that it could have been avoided. I thought that we would have been able to agree on a consensus candidate. It didn't happen, but that's because, as you well know, democracy is a tumultuous, rambunctious affair and <laughs> utterly unpredictable. The delegates trickled in over a four-hour period. The media was camped outside in the scorching sun as once again they were denied access inside the event. Outside the gates of the IT vet, several senators and standard bearers openly declared their preference for leader, while others like Gaspar Vega, John August, Pablo Marin and Tracy Panton refused any interviews with the media. Who are you supporting, sir? <laughs> Good morning. Man. Good morning, Mr. Prime Minister. Who did you vote for? <laughs> It's very rude of me to ask, but for the right candidate. I noticed you, Massa Faber for leader. That's right, of course. <laughs> All the way. I swear allegiance to the Constitution of Belize and to the United Democratic Party and to the people in Mesopotamia. And Patrick Faber is the best person for Belize, for Mesop, and for the government. Who are you supporting today? Well, I had made it very clear. And so we have two choices really, we have three choices, but we have two choices. And uh, the two choices, the Honorable Patrick Faber and the Honorable John Saldiva, I made it clear my position in the, in the cabinet, my answer is clear. Oh. I'm supporting Minister Faber. Are you supporting Minister Faber, Minister Ellington, or Minister um, Saldiva? I don't think I'm ready to give that direct answer yet. In the weeks leading up to the convention, the candidates were nationwide campaigning to the delegates in all divisions. For Belize Rural South, Area Representative Manuel Heredia Jr. indicated that he coordinated the meeting with his area and didn't have much influence on how the delegates voted. We did allow the uh, two candidates that asked us, that is Saldivar and Fawar, that asked to, to meet my delegates and both of them were welcomed the same way to speak to our delegates and I told my delegates that look at the two candidates, see the quality, see the integrity, see everything about in each one. I know both of them very well, I like both of them, 
But at the end of the day, I think that the only leader that can bring victory to this party for November is Patrick Farber. I believe that at least we have at least four that, in, that are going for the other candidate other than my own. And then they're, they're, they have every right to do so. But the vast majority will follow their area representative. By three o'clock that afternoon, the battle was over and UDP chairman delivered the final results and swore in the new UDP party leader elect. 567 delegates of the UDP voted today to select the new party leader elect. 567 out of 569, Patrick Farber received 286 votes. John Saliva received 267 votes. Wilfred Ellington received 10 votes and there were four rejected ballots. So the official tally, given the official tally, the Honorable Patrick Farber is the new party elect leader of the United Democratic Party. Patrick Faber, flocked by his supporters and family, expressed his gratitude for the victory. Notably absent at the end of it all was John Saldiver, who back in February enjoyed the support of Faber when he was declared the party leader-elect. Faber refused to comment on Saldiver's absence and would only say that his first goal is to mend fences within the UDP. It is my life's ambition, as you know, to become the leader of this party and to be of service to this party. Of course, that, the only thing that can make that further complete is offering my service to the country as the Prime Minister of this country someday. And I'm hoping that that is very soon with the, with the historic victory of the UDP that will be in November or whenever it, the general elections are called. Farber was declared the UDP's party-elect, having received 59 votes more than Saldiver. Reporting for Love News, I am Renee Trujillo.